That tornado, as we said, killed six people in Harrisburg. We're learning more about those victims tonight. Area funeral homes confirmed the deaths of 75-year-old Mary Ruth Osmond, 22-year-old Jalen Farrell, who was a nurse at Harrisburg Medical Center. 74-year-old Linda Hull was also killed, along with husband and wife Randy and Donna Ran, 64 and 61 years old. The name of the sixth victim has not been released. News 3's Stephanie Tierpak talked with families of some of those victims, and she begins our team coverage tonight. Stephanie, it has to be a difficult time for those families. Yeah, Mark, today we learned that five of those victims were neighbors, and those families that I talked to say they're doing as well as they could be, thanks to support from the community. Moments after the storm, family members rushed to the homes in the tornado's path. I, I don't know what I felt. I think I was just went numb. Trying everything to find loved ones in the middle of chaos. Texting, texting, calling, it went to voicemail. Um, you know, just uh, you have, you know, you just have to hear him. You know, you want to get a hold of him. And I uh, called him, I said, you need to come town. I said, I can't get a hold of her. I don't know what's going on, but went right through there. And Mary Ruth Osmond's son, Daryl Osmond, made it to her home just in time to see her driven away by ambulance. She would mumble some words and squeeze our hands. You know, so she knew we were there. Jaylen Farrell's mother, Patty Farrell, learned her daughter had been found a street away. We don't understand why, and you know, it's not our place to ask why. Osmond died at the hospital a short time later, and Farrell was pronounced dead. Five of the victims lived here in the Brady Street apartments. A housing development finished just last year. The area is also one of the worst for damage with many of the duplexes torn away from the foundation. 22 year old Jay Lynn was a nurse at the Harrisburg Medical Center and a Sunday school teacher for three year olds at her church. And that was the joy. That was the joy, one of the joys of her life. Um, she loved those little kids and they loved her. Jay Lynn grew up in Pope County and dreamed of one day traveling to all 50 states. You know, she just was a, a really special, special young lady. 75 year old Mary Ruth Osmond had lived in Harrisburg for most of her adult life and collecting the small pieces of that life has been a comfort to her family. We're finding things that don't matter and you know there's things we can't find that are important to us. Her glasses, her jewelry, you know, little things. Both the Farrells and the Osmonds believe their faith is the only thing helping them cope with the loss. And whenever the second one got there, there was a hug and I love you to each other. And I think that's what I'll miss the most. Now Jalen's mother tells me that Pope County High School has already started a scholarship fund in her daughter's memory. And although Wednesday's tornado brought death and destruction, we're also starting to hear amazing stories of survival. Anything we can do to keep an officer or a deputy or a dispatcher. Massac County has struggled to make ends meet, with cutbacks taking a toll on the sheriff's department in jail. I've already got two people laid off. You know, we don't know from week to week if I'm going to have to lay off anybody else. A big chunk of the department's budget goes toward food. Banquet TV dinners. Frozen meals have been the main course served at the jail since the 1980s, an expense totaling more than $90,000 a year. The Massac County Jail holds 42 inmates and at three meals a day, the jail purchases more than 500 frozen food items each week. The food bill is a lot more now than it has been in the past. So when jail administrator John Koneman discovered coupons inside the meal boxes, he decided to put them to use. Times are hard right now. Coupon it seems to be a way to help. Sheriff Ted Holder can't believe the savings. I thought, well, $25, $30, it's, you know, it's, it's a nice idea, but it's really not going to amount to anything. Now a month into the program, the jail has saved $400. Good catch for the day. We're talking about saving maybe five, $6,000 a year. Trusty inmates in charge of cooking tear off the discounts and pile them up for Koneman to use on food orders. <laughs> the last batch included more than 300 coupons. And that's going to feed extra inmates and be less money out of the taxpayer's pocket. Now the department is hoping the coupons inside the meals will last. 
while searching for better deals across their budget. I can guarantee we're going to start looking harder. If there's any other coupons out there that we can use in this building, we're going to use them. I was very, very nervous. I didn't sleep very much last night. Worrying about it, just thinking that it wouldn't, might not happen. It was all grown up around it. The first attempt to move Hamilton County's old jail failed because the iron structure weighed too much. Approximately seven tons. But Tuesday morning, the team was finally able to load it onto a trailer and make the drive from Flanagan Township to McLeansboro. Very slow. <laughs> Farmer and truck driver Lloyd Darnell volunteered his equipment to help. Although he usually spends his time hauling oil field tanks. I had the car in front and the car was stopping the traffic and I could not see behind me at all. It was just the expertise the Historical Society was looking for. We wanted to get here and in good shape. The 24 foot by 12 foot jail is divided into four tiny cells. You're in the jailhouse now. And an area for a stove. The goal is to one day turn the structure into a museum. To be this old, it's in very good condition. The jail was built in 1860 and sat on the McLeansboro City Square until 1938. And like most old jailhouses, it has its legends. There was one person that died in this jailhouse. The jail also housed Fred Beam, the only person ever hanged in Hamilton County. He was convicted of murdering his wife and son in 1868. And that's another picture of, of him as he comes to, the, to be hanged. The cells were protected inside a city building during use. But when the jail was sold, a farmer moved it out of town and turned it into a corn crib. It's very good. Pretty good solid stuff. It just needs some uh, TLC on it. The now weathered building will need some repairs and welding work. The first thing we're going to do is get a big car wash down here, a big high pressure washer, and we're going to wash it and get all the mud out of it. The renovations may take a while, but once complete, the jail will be returned to its old home on the courthouse lawn. Right now, a lot of people think it looks like a piece of junk, but I think after it's done, they'll say, I believe that's a a pretty nice piece of history.